Cleveland Sports News. Cleveland Sports News means biased and outspoken opinion. Hi, I'm Cleveland Sports News. Full, 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 full crew. I'm getting distracted here. They're going to get tickets from the top. You're supposed to say I'm biased and outspoken opinion. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. News. I got where you're going, yeah. but you didn't get it. So. Yeah. Should we try to get it? No, I was fine. Whatever. Um, I was supposed to get in the clue. That was supposed to be a show <laughs> intro. Got horribly wrong, but Dale, good, good attempt. Good hey, attempt, man. though. I'm swinging. Failed on Ramon, though. Swinging. Um, is it the, the game day battle clue? My clue, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's it. yeah, and I didn't help that matter at all. So, anyway, you good over there? Yeah. This is Brett Finnegan, part of the game day battle crew, and in full force tonight. In full, oh wait a minute, no sports attire. What's up? Maybe a monster's hat. What's going on? You go monster to truck rally today? Kenny Chesney concert? Yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with that, y'all? Nothing, man. I just wanted <laughs> yeah. to know. Is this in honor of, uh, I don't know, <laughs> Daytona 500? Nope. Some NASCAR? I wore a hat. Just lazy? No, I, I was out. I did some, did some errands today. Some tractor work. Here, so. All right. He All does right. have a life outside of GDV. I do not. Went to my first, like, wedding show thing, so. You went to a wedding and that... And that's that yeah. fitting their uh, wedding show. Like, You're not like, helping you. Like wedding show thing. Oh, bridal show. Yeah, whatever. Like I'm thinking about getting married. I'm gonna go uh, price out some bridal things. The only thing that's I did right. was I had vodka cranberries. I had an amazing line of Google slushy that had summer shandy, vodka, and orange juice. Ooh. Uh, all yeah, right. I got my character done. All good that's things. Fun. Other than that, and he came out married. Yeah. Done. Done. Sold. Ramon Torres, the. Uh, Terrorist to my right. Oh still. man, dude, yeah. <laughs> what, what was that? You even, you like, I'm even gonna throw on the skull cap. Yeah, yeah. all black. Yeah, dude. You, it's these Cleveland brutal winners, man. Fucking ninja out, man. I don't know. This is a bad time for me right now. No sports, real big sports going on. Other than the Cavs winning a few games, but other than that, it's like, yeah, it's dry real, times. Real black. It's dry times. So you know, you're kind of just like, whatever. But you Wait can smell, draft, you can you know. smell spring training though. Yeah, it you does, know, yeah. You know, so. On the horizon. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Mr. Shantz Tursey, want to yeah, show the shirt out there a little bit? Oh, yeah. That is a cool, cool it's shirt. A, uh, it's a play on the Witness shirt, obviously. Uh, it's about three years late, but yeah. still pretty funny nonetheless. Apparently, Brett doesn't like it too much. No, I like the shirt. Maybe if it was in plaid. <laughs> no, I like the shirt. I like the shirt. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's even got the Nike swoosh, so they might sue. Well, there goes uh, all of Game Day Battles funding. Yep. <laughs> in case you can't see it, um, that's victim. Yeah. Victim. Yeah. Instead of the witness. Yeah, I got I'm you. the victim. Yeah. You are. Yeah. We all are. We are all, all out there for you. We are all yeah. victims. They, I think they got it. it it's, a, yeah. it's a rhetorical shirt. You're just like, yeah, I get it. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Nice. I'm Mike Glass. We have a very big show tonight. Um, obviously, as, as Ramon pointed out, it is kind of a, a downtime for Cleveland sports. Not a whole lot going on, you'd think, but really, there's a lot of activity. Of course, we've had the turmoil it, with the Browns, and the uh, Cavs came out of nowhere to win, what, was it six, six straight, row, seven yep. straight, mm -hmm. six straight? And uh, it all came on the heels of firing Chris Grant who was somebody who got a lot of praise early on and at times got a lot of praise and then really became the focal point for all of the heat and misery and anger uh, by all Cleveland sports fans. So um, I want to talk about what happened, how they started winning. It's not like the team changed, but something changed. So what happened, why, and uh, you got to back it up. So oh, well, well so, I've got the real story for you, Mike. Well, the, the coming up, the real coming story. up tonight at 11. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll get into that. Um, we cannot... Uh, just let the Browns go. Obviously, they are our, our uh, unless, sort of unless you're the GM, then we'll let you go. Uh, yeah. Nice, uh. nice. So we all know about um, Banner's gone, Lombardi's gone, and uh, Farmer. Yeah, we can, we can applaud that. I can, I can show some love. Um, Farmer is now the GM, and he's doing things a little bit differently. Um, at this point, his biggest question he's been asked is, what's going to happen with Brandon Whedon? So that's the question I'm going to throw out to you and all of you. What exactly should we do with this guy and why? So Brandon Whedon, also Alex Mack, who I don't think there's a person on this panel that had any problem with Alex Mack, right? Mm -hmm. Solid player, solid oh, player. Yeah. His contract expired. They're up for negotiations, and he's refusing to talk until after February. So that's coming up soon. It's going to happen. Why is the guy not coming to the table? Why is it that he doesn't seem very willing to come back to Cleveland, at this point at least, 
And what does that mean does it, for this regime? Is there no respect, no, no belief in the regime or the system? Does he want out of here? You worried? So there we go. That's also, uh, oh, yeah. TJ Ward as well. No contract yeah, talks with him. Did Travel war. What's going on? So you definitely, we got to start uh, talking with him. Got to get him signed, don't you think? Oh, yeah. We Shit, think. yeah. Yeah, we think. So we'll get into all of that. And uh, I say we started off with Cavs. Cavs have gone on a very nice tear, just destroying things along the way. Um, now they lost tonight, so yeah. whatever. Two in a row. Yeah, three in a row. Two, actually, two in a row. No, two in a row. Two in a row. But you can't take away. You can't take away from the fact that they uh, they fired Chris Grant, and suddenly the team started winning. And it wasn't like they they got a little bit better. They got a little bit better. They just they won the very next yeah. game, and then they were really really good. They like they got the memo. They're they like, did. Hey, the guy that thought we were all good brought us all here. He's they gone. fired him. So yeah. uh, we better start playing basketball. So is that what you think, Dale? Is that do you think that it just kind of like shook them down to the core? It doesn't have like to. I mean, if you know the business of basketball, you know that you know the GM is responsible for you know okaying you know the the final moves of what guys to sign and what guys to draft, and um, you know this group of guys that they put together. Before that stint, I mean, they were playing awful. I haven't seen this bad basketball since you know when Byron when Byron Scott first took over the team uh, yeah. three years ago. Uh, definitely thought it should have been Mike Brown. I don't think anybody at this table will disagree with that. That that should have went. Okay, well you'll get your time. But um, you know, I, I like Chris Grant, and and I actually think they should give him his job back if if this team should somehow make the playoffs. I think that he's drafted quality players. Uh, it's not his job to, um, you know, further these guys and, and sharpen them up. That, that comes down to the coaching staff and, uh, you know, what they can add to their game and sharpen points of their game that they already have. But, you know, they, they, they shook up the team with, with that move, no doubt about it. But I'm sad, I'm sad to see Chris Granko. I like him. Do you think it was a little bit of fear, or do you think it was just suddenly understanding? We had to do something. We lost to the Lakers at home, and by what, 30? And, and, and normally you could say you lost to the Lakers at home, and you're like, well, it's the Lakers. But yeah. this isn't the Lakers. It's not the Lakers. This is some collection they, of they, players. They were without everybody, yeah. and they were off a of back-to-back -back from Toronto, and they came here and they whooped us by, yeah. by 25 points. So something had to happen. They had to get everybody's attention, and you know, I guess firing the GM will do that. Yeah, it will. Um, Ramon. Uh, I don't know if you're a Chris Grant fan or not, but do you think this was a legitimate firing? I mean, do you think, uh, are you on board with it? And then the question remains, what exactly happened to this team to change them into a winner? Well, I'm definitely on board with it. Um, obviously, the, I think the last um, two draft picks were horrible um, with, with waiters, nobody, nobody's radar. And then, you know, he hasn't panned out. Like, he went back to coming off the bench. Did you watch the All-Star game? He didn't watch the All-Star game, or the All-Star weekend. Then. So, I feel he can just, we could have got him in the second round, or even later on, you know, and he still could have came off the bench. No, we got him. We wasted our high draft pick on him, just like with Bennett as well. Like, I don't, I don't know what he's been seeing in players lately, but the quality of players he's been picking up, ain't been to what the standards of what that pick could have been. Like, I can name you, you know, ten draft picks that are, are, are doing way better. Feel free. You know, please. Give me please, a list. Please well, do. I, we didn't got I'll tell you what. Back. I'll tell you what. Give me two. Michael Carter-Williams. That was drafted well, after Waiters, not before. No, I'm talking about with Anthony Bennett as well. To go one, as well, and all the players behind you are doing way better than him. You know what I'm saying? Dude, Waiter, Waiter's been stepping up as so, their sixth man, giving us 20, well, he, 25 he, he points off, off the, the bench. bench which that's what he, all he is, is a bench player. So the bench we, players don't go first round first. But the games we lost, well, that's, but he's still young. You, but but I mean, I'm both saying. him and both him and Kyrie came out really early. But, um, but, but the games we've lost, he's been, he hasn't been there. Dion Waiters. So, I mean, he's been, I don't know, he's hurt, supposed to be out of a couple more weeks or a couple more games or something like yeah, that. But then, you know, when we had Earl Clark, we didn't use him. We, there's a lot of players we don't use, you know, that, that can step up. But Mike Brown doesn't know how to use these players. Obviously, I would have loved to see Mike Brown leave as well with them. I would have packaged them up in a deal and got rid of them. Um, but as far as uh, shaking up the team, I, I, I think that we always had quality players on our, our, on our team to play good. You know, we lost... A few buzzer beater games like we could have been right up into the over 500 or right into playoff talks you know if we would have won those games but 
right now, I think we're playing good ball. The team is gelling better. It was still early in the season that these guys came over and played together. Chris Grant fan before this? No. Okay, so how did the firing come to you? Did it, did it come like something that like you expected, were okay with, or? I was I was hoping for it. Really, okay. I did. Uh, I To me, I don't think Mike Brown should be in, at fault for most of this. He he sent he sent Deion, uh, Deion Waiters out of practice when he was getting mouthing off. Chris Grant told him to put him in the game. You need to have a backbone. You need to have your GM stand up for your head coach also. You can't tell him because Hey, put Dion in there for his usual minutes. If you're gonna have a player mouth off to you, you had to put your you foot it, down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that locker room was a bunch of bullshit and a lot of things going on in that. Your GM needs to step in and put the hammer down. Mm -hmm. And he didn't. And look what happens. I mean, you know, this this intern guy has went out and got a, a, a center that we needed. Yeah. Uh, and I yeah. think he's got a little more stern, a bit more of a backbone. I think Chris Grant does, and I think this is what really needed to happen. I think all of your points were, were valid, and I think that's obviously something that's going to be more of an opinion than we can find fact in. But one of the things that I noticed was right off the bat with the new uh, the new guy that steps in, which I, I think is actually he's just like interim at this point, but mm -hmm. uh, and obviously making a good case to keep his job. First thing he did was gathered all the players in the room or in a room and said, "It's time to have fun with this game." This is a game. This is basketball. Let's go out there and just play and have fun. And this is what they, they said that had happened. In the very first game, the first thing that happened was Dion Waiters and, and Kyrie Irving, who we've all heard all the stories about mm -hmm. being angry with each other, hating each other, and wanted to play on the same team, both wanting to be the number one guy, were slapping five. I mean, it, the ways, yeah. Just like that. Just like that. Chumming it up. Yeah. Happy with each other. I think I think the one thing we're missing from this team for a long time has been heart, has been sort of that that understanding that we can win and we will win one way or another. And you know, right that four games that four game streak into the All Star break was huge. But then, not to mention, Cleveland had a huge All Star weekend. We had two players that rose mm -hmm. trophies above their heads for individual accolades amongst. Uh, the best players uh, in the league. See yeah. Kyrie Irving come out yep. there and really go on yeah. 15 points and 12 dimes in the third quarter. I mean, yeah. you know, when you're out there playing against the best of the best and you get, you're one of the only guys that gets single recognition when you had a guy knocking on Will Chamberlain's door, who, you know, the game that Blake Griffin had out there for him to still get the nod. Um, and waiters get that recognition that, wow, maybe these players really are. And maybe now they're seeing who they really are. And they're buying into each other. Yeah. And we, we really saw a higher energy those first two games after the All-Star break. And we brought it up to six. And then, unfortunately, Dion Waiters hyperextended that knee. And we haven't had him in the game and uh, these past two. And we, you could really tell that, you know, without him and Andy, we're, we're hurting out there. Well, and, and that kind of, uh, and, and you're right. I mean, that's... Um an example of the players that we have, and I know you, you knocked Deion Waiters, and I said from the day we drafted him, and the three of you all were like, I don't know what, who's Deion Waiters guy? And I had been able to see him, because I watched a little bit of uh, Big East ba basketball periodically, and I saw the just the ferocious guy that this player was, and attitude problem, always had problems in school, had to, had, had to uh, skip, or uh, switch schools a couple times, we refused to play defense. He's a bad egg. Oh, he's a bad egg. So I, I, I always said, if they can get his head right, he is a seriously good player and just a relentless player. He's an Andy Verjal type energy player, but with the, the ability to shoot. And no doubt, and, no doubt, we've been seeing it. I mean, we've seen we've seen flashes. Oh yeah, and, 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 and yeah, but that's still that's very team. young. Very young, but also he doesn't show that that greatness. Yeah, he shows he can be a good player. And one game, but then he'll go out and, and score ten points. He's a then, it, fucking sophomore, dude. Matter, you be you out go there up putting and up down. thirty every night, dude. Yeah, but come give me on, consistency. Man. I'd rather have fifteen points straight across. He'll come out and have six points one game, and then he'll go for forty the next game, and then he'll go to fifteen. I ain't trying to hear all, all that. Up and down, no, no, up and down. Player. It's basketball. If, he, if he's if he's 
30, 40 points one night and then and 10 points another the night. Oh, that's fine. If and he was such an players, elite player, like you guys are saying, he wouldn't be coming off our No, no, wait, wait, wait. We're, we're not saying, saying, we're saying he's elite. We're, saying, elite, we're saying that he's a very good player and a good pick. Now, an extremely gifted, talented, athletic, young you player. Gifted and in the NBA. and young player. He's, got, he's got that ambition and drive and attitude that I think this team lacked all the LeBron years and, ever, and before then and after then. It's that, that punch you in the face. Remember the Detroit Piston team that won two championships? Mm -hmm. Remember that just punch you in the face attitude that they had? Yeah. I love that. And their, their motto was, if it ain't dirty, it ain't ours. And so well, that's not they, very professional, Mike. No, it's not. And I actually frown on that style of basketball. No, you don't actually. But we all love it, <laughs> and and you got to be able to do it. And you might get you might get so called out. It's a gentleman's not. game. No, no, golf <laughs> is a gentleman's game until you throw a bunch of beer in there, which is what I do. <laughs> so. Uh, So let's just kind of shift the end of the table here to kind of round this out. Now we all touched a little bit about on Chris Grant and what he can or has done or hasn't done. But let's just look at his career here specifically. Are you would you call Chris Grant more of a bust in Cleveland or was he just the scapegoat for the current situation? Uh, good question, Mike. That's a good, very good question. question. I, I mean, with, with the uh, draft picks of yeah, what Tristan John, Tristan Thompson. Dion and then Anthony Bennett, right? Those are yeah, three. I think he was there for Kyrie. And then Ky well, Kyrie was the same year as uh, Tristan, right? Or Dion? No. Yeah, Kyrie and Tristan were drafted in the same year. Yeah. Okay. Uh, draft pick wise, I mean, you can't really bust him for that. So for Anthony Bennett, I think that was a huge bust. I really think too early. Huh? Sorry. It's not too early for that. It's too early, too early to tell on Anthony Bennett. Sorry, people. This is my time. I don't want you to ask Chris Grant did. Um, where he's at. I think uh, I think he was all around. I think he was a bust. I think this is. A, I always wonder about what if Danny Ferry didn't leave after LeBron did, and what would this team would be then? Uh, what? <laughs> because I think Danny Ferry was a scapegoat too, and he actually left before he yeah. was a scapegoat. And. To me, I I really hope I really wish he was still around, and instead of I think what Phoenix now I think he is over there. I'm not sure, but uh, I think I think Chris Grant was a was a bust so far. Well, a it bust? is yeah, bust. Nice yeah. but okay. Yeah. All right, so uh, continue on down, Ramon. What do you think, uh, bust or scapegoat? Yeah, bust. No scapegoat here. Like I said. Um, he, he didn't do nothing for us. Man. I don't even know why I bothered asking you. I know you're gonna you're gonna blame every bad pick on him. No, so. but, but there's not only every bad pick. It's a lot of players out there that he he ain't, he ain't go grab. You know, a lot of free agents. You know, you all right. So well, here, here's here's some homework for you. And I'm not saying that this ain't the case, but you can show us next next show. What players could he have drafted? With it, with any of his picks that he didn't, that are now doing very well. I can give you one of Michael Elder Depot down in Orlando. Well, he was doing he crazy uh, numbers he, down there. He, that was and, and the whole pick of the whole <laughs> you know pick of, I mean? of Anthony Bennett because that was the Anthony Bennett uh, yes. year. It was last year, and the whole pick of Anthony Bennett is he, they got him as a project because he is another guy that showed great athletic ability. But just needed to kind of bring it all together. He's not an attitude guy, but he's he needed to bring a lot of things together. And they're working with him. If in two years he is a, a, a you know upper echelon player, then I would call it I call that a good pick. But okay, but if you knew like a KD was coming out, do you say, hey, I'm gonna take this project, or we're gonna get this star? Okay, well, okay. But that's also what the team needs too. It was also but, it was also a number one pick. I, I I do admit, you know, I like all the depot. When the draft was going on, everyone was even saying that if anyone was most NBA ready out of the entire first entire first round, it was Oladipo. So I mean, he he was ready to go and, and and ready to play in the NBA, but was he really worth a caliber first overall pick? That was the question. Exactly. So, Dale, Jim Harbaugh to Cleveland. Segway! Which brings up the Browns. Yes, nice segue. Thanks to Dale. Um, 
The Browns uh, obviously aren't playing now, but they are always, always in our thoughts. They never were. <laughs> they never were. But nice, nice, nice bread. Nice, it's more like it. Yeah. So um, we're gonna hope that this coming season is not the same season, uh, nightmare season that we've seen, and it may not be. There have been many, many changes. We have a completely new front office, and uh, we can thank uh, one of the Stooges, Jimmy Haslam, for that. Mm -hmm. So we got rid of the other two Stooges. Um, We've got Farmer in there who, I don't know why, but people praise this guy. I mean, shouldn't you, like, do something first? Shouldn't you, like, actually achieve something and then people can praise you? But whatever. The media wants to jump all over this guy as, the, as a great GM or a future great GM. He's the guy who has been asked about Brandon Whedon, which is the number one question. What do you do with your number one, or uh, it was a second pick, but a number one uh, first, first round draft pick, pick, I should say, mm -hmm. from a couple mm -hmm. years ago and meant to be the franchise quarterback who now might not be able to be a start or a, a backup quarterback on any other team. What do you do with the guy? You owe him money. Do you keep him as a backup quarterback? Do you try to trade him? Do you just trade dump him, him to get that whole era that out of the system? So, uh, Brett, since you're being so vocal, what? you might have more of an opinion on this. What do you think? Brandon Whedon, what should, what should Farmer do with Yeah, him? Brett, feed us. Let's fucking trade him. He doesn't want to be here anymore, and he thinks he's the never which never was had a role here anyway. Right, so, might, put, so put together a package. Who we want, might who, get a stadium seat for him. That's about it. Who wants a 29 year old second year quarterback out of Cleveland? <laughs> See, NFL. Did nothing could happen. <laughs> he had Jacksonville. Nobody wants him. The Vikings. You can't trade a guy that has no value. He's so, gonna have to suck who else it up. Who else a quarterback out there? The Vikings. Houston. Houston. No, Houston's getting Johnny Manziel. You watch. Oh, I, I would have put that. Right. That's, that's, that's seems pretty likely. Um, on Farmer, he's he's actually been like talked about a bunch of bunch of teams. Like the Dolphins were actually highly going after him for their GM spot. I know. Uh, thriller teams yep. were trying to contact him. So obviously we he's like, got a resume. No. We're like, no, no, man. You're not talking to our guy. I think no, it's kind of like it was one of those things where like, no. oh wait, people are calling you for the GM. You guys are out. No, yeah, guys, we're, we're gonna we're gonna sign this guy for you. No, team. It, I, it came out that he declined all those deals. Yes, he declined well, yeah, exactly. He didn't because, decline them, yeah, because he knew something was going down. He was told, "Stick around; it's gonna be worth your yeah. while." Yeah, and he, stuck he, around. He, he declined. I mean, everything. those teams contacting him to be a GM spot. I mean, that obviously. Puts That's it fine. Out there. That's fine. But and who, what better to learn from these but two feeling bums up there? Up there anyway. Hey, yeah. Here's a recipe for success that I got for you we guys. Can't go, right? We can't go down. You're a new Learned GM. It. You come. You're a new owner of a football franchise that you just paid a billion dollars for. You come in. You get hooked up with this GM by the league, and uh, you know an even an even sorry uh, director of player personnel and, and Michael Lombardi, which was just a nightmare. I don't even know why they brought him in here in the first place. So you guys hire this coach. That's your guy. You know, you let him play for a year. Then you go ahead and fire that guy. So he's going the system. And then, so so then you let him go, and then you let your GM hire a new coach, and then you fire your GM and bring in a new GM. So now he doesn't have his coach. It's disgusting. We reverse hire our whole our whole organization. We have a very, very small amount of time left, and small. we like to uh, as well. we like to party. <laughs> That's the amount of time we have left. So. We like to party, <laughs> and no, uh, we like to use this time to raise our beer to somebody we love, somebody we hate, spout off in any way that we want about anything we want for a couple minutes. Um, it's fun. So. I'm going to start it off with Brett Finnegan to my left. You might have seven of these because he tends to go on forever in raising of the beer. But go ahead, Brett. It's all yours. It's all yours. Yeah, one. All right. You kind of disappointed me there. I built you up, but now. Well, you down. should probably know beforehand. All right. I should, but I don't. I want to raise mine for uh, Saturday night's uh, crowd at the Monsters, for over 15,000 people. Uh, I also want to raise it to Joe Hayden, who was Joe Hayden Bobblehead Night. He was there. He interacted with all the fans every time he walked by. He took pictures with all the fans and everything. And uh, all around good guy. Um, so here's that. Were you there? Nice. Nice. Actually, I was. I missed it. I was in the rafters. I missed it. Were you stealing the uh, the banner? Actually, yeah. I was putting Did the jersey. Did you steal the Austin Car jersey? I was putting the jersey back. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you are the terrorist, so uh, what would you like 
to say in your couple of minutes. Uh, I'm gonna raise my beer to uh, Jessica Evil Eye. She a uh, UFC Eye. fighter from Cleveland. Had oh. great showing uh, last night, man. Couldn't pull it out. I think she got robbed. Could be our first but, guest. She's gonna be our first guest. Oh, uh, maybe, maybe her and Lozano on the same time. Yeah, right? that'd be pretty cool. We'll like we'll let each of them punch one of us. <laughs> no, see can, let's see, <laughs> punch each other. See if we can take a hit from her. Yeah. So uh, good showing by her, man. Uh, come back strong Jello the next fight, wrestling. and uh, hopefully you win that one. I can do the UFC yeah. Jello. There you UFC go. Jello wrestling. Is that what she does? Is that Brett saying? I don't know. I'm saying they can show up. We can have them do that. I mean, KY and Jelly. <laughs> I think we, I think we just lost them. Yeah, we did. <laughs> You're my boy, bro. <laughs> well, Mr. Chance Tercy. I'm going to raise my beer to uh, the real reason that the Cavaliers went on a six-game winning streak. And that is thank you to the wonderful TMZ reporting who was in an interview with adult film star Ava Devine who came out and said that she is a Cavaliers fan post-LeBron nice. era and that she would run a train on the entire Cleveland Cavaliers roster if they were to make the playoffs. So all you got to do is hit that eight seed and we'll see. <laughs> we got to come up with a porno name for the Cavaliers running a train on uh, Ava Devine. Maybe, you know, maybe throw the hammer down. <laughs> yeah. You know Kyrie's looking forward to some sloppy... Uh, um, Stripper taking it to the hole. She's not that hot. I'm sure we could throw some pictures of her up there right now. Yeah. Maybe, maybe even maybe we could even run the clip. I don't know, but yeah. right down Euclid. <laughs> right down <laughs> Euclid, baby. <laughs> Ava Devine, Cavs fans, that'd be uh that'd give me a reason to go win some games. You'd hop in that, wouldn't you? Eh, I dabble. I mean, you probably you, you, you'd, you'd probably go in like right yeah, after well, the uh, the second team though. You I'm know? going in. What are you trying to say? I take slops after the Cavaliers. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're probably right. Would you lick that pussy afterwards? Ooh, damn, Mike. <laughs> My mom watches this, bro. <laughs> she does. Oh god. She doesn't want to beep that out. <laughs> I, 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 only, I, I only go down if it's if it's fresh out the shower clean. There you go. You know, I'm, not, I'm not trying to go swimming after an eight-hour shift. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm gonna. You feel dirty now, Mike. <laughs> yeah, I do. You feel so rough. I'm gonna keep this. Uh, I'm gonna keep this uh, rolling calf style. Uh, I'm gonna wave. Uh, hold on one second. This is. I gotta see this video. Oh, I broke the glass. What was it? I think it was a, Dude, look at that. It was a bird or some shit. He, no, that's the guy. Fall into no, the plane. No, it was a guy. It's raining hippies. <laughs> Man, Sorry, there was a video that we're actually. Well, there's a TV, big TV behind the. Uh, yeah. What do you think? What do you think you're all we care about? Yeah. Come on. We got <laughs> they have no, a plane. No, we do. That's you are all we care this. about. Yeah, some guy hitting a plane, and it was it was a good video, and I got startled by it. Anyway, I'm gonna keep it rolling with the Cavs, and I want to uh, raise my beer. A pie, a little bit left, but I'll raise that little bit left. To Deion Waiters, who is now proving all of those people uh, who doubted him and the decision to pick him wrong, that he is a seriously good player and he will be a good and a high level player in the in the NBA for a long period of time. You gonna order so, that Waiters jersey? No. That's the Deion Waiters. <laughs> he should have been a waiter. Oh. We uh, we apologize for an awful show today. We uh, we came super lazy with it. We did. No, today. I think uh, the factors of the weather didn't play in our part as well. Yeah, we were kind of on a three week bender here. You know, it's that weather, weather time. Bad, but you deserve you deserve better, and we're gonna we're gonna get back into the flow. Weather here was real bad, soon. real soon. Yeah. We're gonna fire our GM, and yep. then we're coming out. And so. then a porn star is gonna run a train on all of us. Wait, am I the GM? Yeah. Yeah. We're, gonna, yeah. we're gonna do a show every Tuesday, Thursday. Every Tuesday, Thursday. Alright, well, it could be a bad yeah, it is. suck or, or, or great, either way. Oh, yeah. Battle on. Battle on. So the uh, delirium battery hit here. You hate it. You like it? like vomit and taste it. My stomach vomit. It was okay. It was good. I love it. I'll take that bottle over to you. Enjoy it. Okay. I'm going to leave on the stage. Which one makes sure you have breath?